Hello everyone! So today we've got a bit of a an oddly specific video. We really need a one certain chemical for an overarching project. I might as well tell you what the project is because most people are guessing what it is given the fact that last video we extracted sodium palmate from the soap. And of course what we're trying to do is we're trying to make authentic napalm. <laughs> um, the first napalm from, from World War II. Obviously horrific stuff, you know, we'll get into that later on. But if we look at the name napalm, palm bit comes from palmate, but the nay bit <laughs> comes from naphthenic acid. Now, naphthenic acid is a very obscure chemical. Well, I mean, it's just like a carbon chain. It's nothing that exciting, but if we are to follow this exact napalm recipe, we do need this chemical. With little other industrial uses, it is hard to find. There's no reason for any seller to sell this kind of chemical. It's got no research use or anything like that. So really, no one is selling it, maybe except Ligma Aldrich. But apart from that, you can't buy it anywhere. However, I have managed to find a source of the naphthenic acid, and it happens to be from my local hardware store, once again. This here is EcoSeal Timber Preservative, and it contains 12 grams per kilogram copper, present as copper naphthenic. Thenate. Naphthenate. Hell yeah. 12 grams per kilogram is bugger all. And the fact that this can is only 300 grams. There's only, what, four, <laughs> four grams of copper naphthenate in here. And this cost me 15 bucks for this tube. <laughs> However, it's a source of it. It's it's a source. So if we can make this synthesis work, at least we can, we can do it, you know? At least we can do it. Uh, looking at the other ingredients, we've got 1.3 grams per kilogram per methrin. The permethrin is something to keep in mind. I don't think it's terribly toxic to people. We're obviously not going to want that in our final product, so we've got to find some way of separating that out. But also, uh, permethrin is fantastically toxic to our eight-legged friends. Um, so we want to crack open for the first time. I've got a one-litre flask here, and um, let's spray some out and see what it actually looks like. All right, I've changed my mind, and I might just cool this down in the freezer before I, I do all this. Seems a bit more volatile than maybe I was expecting. I probably uh, sentenced all the insects to death already with all the permethrin that's been released, but I can't look out for everyone all the time. That took like 40 minutes to get that can empty. Oh man. Don't spill, don't spill, don't spill. Yeah. We've got that little bit in there and all that as well. So, excellent. The total volume of solution has gone down quite a bit just because it's been sitting at room temperature for the past two weeks waiting for me to have time to do this next step. But that's, I think, good in the long run. I actually didn't seal it up very well because I was hoping some solvent would go off, piss off into the atmosphere. I had a bit of a think about the best way of going about this and there's a couple of different options I've thought of but I think the best one is that if we reflux this over some sulfuric acid then hopefully all the copper will go into the aqueous layer as copper sulfate and all the naphthenic acid that's resulted from that will stay in the organic layer which we can then just do an acid base extraction on. It's blaringly sunny so it's kind of ruining the show a little bit but we've got our sulfuric acid and if we add that into our mixture here There's a chance this could react fast enough that we don't even need a reflux, so that's what we're hoping for, because that'll be the easiest option. All right, we'll just leave that stirring for a little bit. I think I can see it changing already, so I don't think I need to apply much heat. I'll just let that go. There 
and after just 10 minutes of stirring, no heat, it's done exactly what I hoped it would do. It's uh, face separated with all the green going down the bottom. How can I film this better? Yeah, look at that. Beautiful. So all that copper is now in the aqueous layer. The top layer just contains our uh, naphthenic acid, also the permethrin. All right, if there was no permethrin in this, it'd probably be done. Just boil this down. It would be the naphthenic acid in this sort of solvent. I just boil the solvent off, we'd be done. We need to do an acid base extraction. Sure, fine, easy. There's just like too much solvent at the moment to deal with. My set funnel's not that big. And also the sodium naphthenate is still a lot of carbons for one, you know, charge. So even though it's a sodium salt, probably still will have quite a high degree of solubility in the organic solvent. So if there's heaps of organic solvent, it won't work terribly well. Our recovery won't be great. Man, it's gone really yellow, but um, you know, what's new? Yellow chemistry, bloody every video. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to boil down. I'm hoping that there'd be roughly a little volatile, the solvents, but who knows, who knows? So as yellow things tend to do on being heated, it's now turned black. Obviously some weird things in the solvent. Hopefully we haven't destroyed our main product. We got some of the volume off, but not a whole lot and not very easily. I gave the solution a quick filter of some black carbon stuff that turned up. Hopefully not our product, hopefully not our product. So now I'm just gonna do the um, extraction with some bicarb in, uh, in some solution. I'll just make up some saturated bicarb solution. It'll be the bottom layer. There you can see there's a tiny little bit of water down there. Now I have them separated, I've got my aqueous layer and my organic layer, and as per the classic acid base extraction, this has the sodium salt in it, which I'm now going to regenerate into the free acid by acidifying this and then extracting it one more time with an organic. So I'm gonna be acidifying it with uh, hydrochloric acid because it's cheap and it's volatile, which is very relatable, so. Right, it's been placed back into a clean set funnel. You can see it's starting to separate out already. I'm gonna be adding some solvent to extract this. I'm kind of very low on immiscible volatile solvents. Like, I've got benzene. I don't have very much benzene. I don't really wanna use benzene because um, it's precious and I've gotta keep that for other videos. I've got toluene, you know, hardly volatile. What other solvents I've got? I've got carbon tet. I don't wanna use that. <laughs> I don't have any chloroform, don't have any DCM. Um, I have, what do I have? For some reason, I have some of this lying around, which is um, from my distilling petrol video, pentane slash hexane, which is ideal. I don't know how it survived this long in this jar. It must be nearly two years old. <laughs> This is also a, a hexane pentane mix. Well, I mean, hexane 45 to 65. This is, a, this is the, uh, the other fraction, slightly higher. But, you know, pretty much just as volatile. Oh, man, how are they kept in these jars, honestly? Here's our final uh, bright yellow extract. To get the solvent off, I'm just gonna stir it very gently. It's like 35 degrees outside, so that's above the boiling point mostly of, of a lot of the solvent, so I don't really need to heat it. <laughs> Here is 1.8 grams of uh, yellow oil, which should be our final product. I mean, it shouldn't be yellow, but you know how it goes, you know how it goes. This should be permethrin free, and um, hopefully we haven't spread too much permethrin around. Let's do some quick um, characterization to be sure what we have is actually a, just a carboxylic acid. A drop on some pH paper doesn't really give us too much of a reading, but um, we wouldn't expect much from just the pure organic acid. If we add a little bit of water to it, yeah, you can see once it's dissolved in water, it actually becomes acidic. So see those little bits of oil floating on top? Well, you do expect them to float on top because it's got a density um, slightly less than one, which is um, what we're seeing here, 
All right, thanks for watching. Uh, we don't have very much, but hopefully we can make do with what we have. And um, I'll see you next time.